Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with Samsung Galaxy A31 Tips and Tricks. So let's get started. So the first tip that I want to show you is how to get a battery percentage to appear in the top corner of your device. So by default, you can't see the percentage and I know many of you would want to see it. So to do this, pull down the shade, go to the settings, then go to search, and then from there you can type in battery or show battery percentage, but essentially search that up. You'll see here a suggestion for show battery percentage, tap on that, and then from here, tap on show battery percentage. And then you can see from there, we now have the battery percentage in the corner, and it doesn't matter where you are within the operating system and what app you are in, you will see the battery percentage. The next tip that I want to show you is how to use side key. So side key is a really cool hidden feature so that you can get more abilities out of the power button. So pull down the shade, go to settings, go to search, type in side, and then you'll see side key right there. So go to side key. You'll see that you have some different options. Now, I already enabled side key prior to making this video, but you can see here that essentially, once you turn it on, you can now get new toggles by double tapping on the power button. So right now, it's set to launch the camera, and that's really convenient. You can see, for example, if I have the display off and I double tap on the power button, it will immediately go over to the camera, so that's really convenient. But if you do have a certain preference, maybe there's a different app that you would rather use with side key instead, you can do that. So you can switch over to open app. I had that set up already to go to Uber, but you can go over to the gear and then you can choose any of the different apps on your device to open up with a double tap of the power button. So like I said, I already have it set up to work with Uber. So if I'm on the home screen, for example, and I wanna to go to that app, I can now just double press on that power button and you can see the Uber app just started. I can also do this with the display off, but if I do that, I do have to either put in my pin code or my fingerprint, but then after doing that, it will immediately start up that app. So that's really awesome and very useful. So with Android 10, they have further expanded the gestures. So by default, you do get the traditional Android navigation buttons. And I personally do find those to be useful because I am very familiar with them. But if you do want to get gestures instead, which in some ways can make using the device easier, but can also give you more screen real estate, you can do that with no issues at all. So to do that, pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, and then type in navigation, or at least start typing in navigation. And then you'll see right here, display navigation bar. So go to that. Go to navigation bar, and then from here you have some different options. So the first option that you have is that you can actually change the button order at the bottom. So if you prefer, for example, to have your back button on the left side and your recent apps button on the right side, you can easily make that change. So that's one option you have there. But then the other option is to get full screen gestures. So if you're someone that maybe has previously used an iPhone, like an iPhone 10 or even the newest iPhone 11, you know that gestures are a big part of the experience with that phone, but you can get it here with your Galaxy A31. So if you wanna do this, go to full screen gestures right there. And then after you do that, you can see that instead of having the standard buttons at the bottom, you instead have this little line here. And then from there, you can just swipe up to go to your home screen. You can also swipe up partially to access your recent apps. And then if you want to go back, you can swipe from the side of the screen. You can even take things a step further by going to more options. And then from there, you can actually adjust it so that if you swipe from the middle, it will do the home button. If you swipe from the right side, it will do the recent apps. And if you swipe from the left side, it will do the back button. And you can also adjust the sensitivity as well. Another cool thing too is that with these full screen gestures, you can turn off gesture hints, which what that does is, is that it actually completely removes that line at the bottom. So everything still works the same, except it is hidden. So you can swipe up, you can go to your home screen, do all of that normal stuff, but you can see here that there's no line or anything. So if you go into different applications, you're gonna be able to use even more of the screen real estate 
and it is going to be a very immersive experience. So that's all really useful. So if you decide to use full screen gestures, this is how you do it. So by default, when you go to your lock screen here, you have a clock and you actually have the ability to customize that. I know a lot of people don't know about that. So to do this, go to your home screen. Then from there, go to the settings and then go to search and then type in clock. And then you'll see under lock screen clock style. So tap on clock style, then go there. And then you'll see from here, you can choose the clock style for the always on display or for the lock screen. So we're gonna do the lock screen for this demonstration. You of course do have the ability to activate the always on display as well, which you can do in this lock screen panel here. But from here, we're gonna go to lock screen. And then you can see we have a choice of a bunch of different clocks. So that's really awesome. So I'm gonna switch over to this clock. And then you even have the ability to customize the color of the clock. So they have some pre-curated colors here. There's also a color wheel, and you can also have it pick the color based on the background. But we're gonna go with green for this color. So to implement this change, I just go to done. And now you'll see that when I go to the lock screen, the clock looks completely different. So that's really awesome. And I like how many different clocks they do have available. So you can definitely pick whichever one you prefer, but there's just a bunch of different choices here for you. So. That's great. The next feature that I wanna show you is a feature called dual messaging. So with many apps like Snapchat, for example, and Facebook, you can only sign in with one account at a time. And that can be very frustrating. But thankfully, with the Galaxy A31, you can actually download two copies of the same app so that you can access both accounts on the device without having to log out of one and log back into another. So to do this, go to the settings, go to search, type in dual, and then you'll see right there under advanced features, dual messenger. So go to dual messenger, and then from there, whatever apps you have installed that are compatible with it will appear. So you can see that I have both Snapchat and Facebook available here to use a dual messenger. Now, I personally don't need this feature because I only have one account for each of these applications. But if you happen to have multiple accounts, maybe, for example, on Snapchat, one account is like your influencer account, or maybe it's a business account and a personal account, whatever it is, you can then access both accounts. So that's a really cool feature, though, and something that, you know, you can't do with iOS, that's for sure. And it's really sweet that you can do it here with the Galaxy A31. One of my favorite features with Android is that we get an app drawer. It's a really awesome feature, of course, a great way to find all of your various apps that you have installed. But if for some reason you want to hide one of these apps, maybe you want to further organize things, for example, or maybe there's an app that's pre-installed that you don't have the ability to uninstall, but you don't want it taking up space here, then you actually have the ability to hide different apps. So for example, let's hide Facebook. So to do that, you need to go to the home screen, hold down on the home screen itself, go to home screen settings, and then from there, go down to hide apps. So tap on hide apps, and then you'll see all your various apps listed here. So I'm gonna hide Facebook. So I'm gonna tap on that, and you can see Facebook is now listed under the hidden apps on the phone. So then from here, I'm gonna tap on done. And now you can see that Facebook is nowhere to be found anywhere throughout the device. So that's really awesome. Now, if you do wanna bring it back, you just do the same thing. Hold down on the home screen, go to home screen settings, go down to hide apps, and then remove Facebook from your hidden apps, and then tap on done. Then from there, you can see that Facebook has now returned to the app drawer, so that's a really awesome feature. So the next feature I wanna show you allows you to double tap on the display to wake it up. So to do this, pull down the shade, go to settings, type in lift, and then you'll see lift awake right there. So we have a bunch of different settings here. First thing is, is that you can activate lift to wake. So it will turn on the screen on the phone when you pick up your phone. You can also do double tap to wake. So double tap on the home screen to wake it up. And then we also have further options such as smart stay, smart alert, easy mute, palm swipe to capture, and swipe to call or send messages. Now many of these are activated by default, but it is still cool to know that these features do exist. So you should definitely try to use these various features so that it can make your user experience even better. The Samsung Galaxy A31 has a very large display. 
and for many people, including myself, it's very difficult to reach the entire display. So there actually is an easy option here to make the usability of this phone better. So pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in one handed, and you'll see one handed mode. And then from there, go to one handed mode. And then you can see here that you do have the ability to actually turn this mode on. So turn on the mode and you have some different options here to activate it. So the first option is to do a gesture. So a swipe down gesture on the home button, or you can just double tap on the home button. So I'm gonna do that. So double tap on the home button. And you can see when I do that, it now switches things into one handed mode. So essentially you're getting like a mini phone so you can do whatever you want that you'd normally do on your device, but everything is a lot smaller now and easy to access and toggle. You can of course easily go back by double tapping on the home button and you can go back to it again by doing that. So very convenient. You can also resize how small or large you want this miniature display to be. And if you want to move it, for example, over to the left side, tap on the arrow and it'll move it over or you can move it over to the right side as well. And then if you wanna go back to the settings, just tap on the gear, and it'll bring you over to the one-handed mode settings. So that's really awesome. I think it's a really sweet feature, and I think it will definitely help out many people. So with Samsung's One UI 2.0, you do get quite a few animations. You do get quite a few animations throughout the interface here. Now, there is a nice, quick, and easy way to reduce the animations, and you can also quickly remove them and now you can do that without even going to the developer options. So to do this, pull down the shade, go to the settings, type in animation, and you'll see right here, reduce animations. So that's under the advanced features. So turn on reduce animations, and now the animations are a lot quicker because they have indeed been reduced. Now if you do wanna take things even a step further, and I'll turn that off for now, you'll see the other option when you search up animations, and that is to remove animations. So that's under accessibility. So you can remove the animations completely. And now you can see that there are no animations throughout the entire interface. So that's really cool, really convenient there. Definitely a big fan of that. So if you're someone that doesn't like animations, then this should improve your user experience. Of course, you can always revert things back if you want to and get your animations back. Next, I want to show you how to take a screenshot. I know this is a pretty basic thing, but I know that some people might not know for sure how to do it. So to take a screenshot, all you have to do is tap on the volume down and power button at the same time. And you can see it now took the screenshot. So then from there, you have some editing options there and sharing options, but that's how you do it. Now you might've noticed on the top right corner here, we have this little indentation and this is the edge screen. So essentially you can put all of your various favorite applications on this app edge. You can also set up folders here if you want to, but that's a really convenient way to access some of your favorite apps throughout the interface. Now, if you do want to remove this feature, maybe you're not a fan of having that little thing on the right side there, then you can easily remove it. So go to search in the settings, type in edge, and you'll see right there edge panel. So tap on edge panel and you actually have a bunch of different options too over here to further customize it. You can even just have it have some of your favorite contacts or you can have it do certain quick toggles and even put the weather up there. So it's really awesome that you do get all these different options, but if you're not a fan of it, you can turn it off and you can see it's now disappeared on the upper right side. Now, one of the cool things with the Samsung Galaxy A31 is that we have the ability to activate the always on display. So essentially, even if the display is off, you will have little alerts that pop up on it. So go to the settings, type in always, and you'll see always on display right there. And then make sure that's enabled. I already have it enabled. And then go to tap to show. And then you'll see that you do get a bunch of different options here. So you can have it so that you have to tap on the screen to show the always on display for 10 seconds. You can have it set to show always or show as scheduled. Of course, you can deactivate it completely if you want to. And you have all kinds of other customizations, such as adjusting the clock style, showing music information, and you can set it to auto brightness. So that's a great feature there. And let me set it to show always. And you can see 
that we now have the always on display pulled up on the phone. And finally, the last thing that I wanna show you is how to pull up multiple applications at the same time. Let's say for example, you're watching a YouTube video and you want to also browse the web at the same time. So to do this, make sure you have all those different apps already pulled up, but then go to the recent apps, hold down the app icon, and then you can open in split screen view. So it'll put that first app up top, then you can select the second app. So I'll select the web browser here. And then you can see up top here, I have the video. And then at the bottom, I have the web browser. So I can browse the web, I can do whatever. I can go on social media, whatever I want. But at the same time, play a video up top. And then to get out of this mode, either push the divider to the top or the bottom. So I'm now completely into YouTube. Another cool feature I wanna show you too is how to have videos, for example, pop out. So hold down the icon, you'll see open up pop-up view. Go to that. And now you can see that you have almost like a mini app. By the way, in addition to doing this with videos, you can do this with any app. If I wanted to just play the video, I can shrink things down to just the size of the video. Additional I can move setup. this anywhere so around the operating system. Let me pause this for a second. I can also adjust the transparency. So maybe I'm on social media and it's the full screen and I still wanna kinda of see what's behind the video but still see the video a little bit. I can have it be transparent. I can also take it back to full screen if I want to. And if I wanna exit out of this completely, I can always tap on the X in the upper right corner. But I hope you enjoyed this tips and tricks video about the Samsung Galaxy A31. These are various hidden features that I thought you definitely would wanna know about. But if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Also make sure to subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video.